Let's go to the Lord in prayer and just bless God. If you remember any wordings of that song, that song is loaded. Loaded with blessings. Loaded with prayers. I'm hoping that when we get to the time of prayer, we'll go back to the song and actually use it to pray. Because it's telling us that we have a special day. Of course, we may be talking about Sunday. But you know what? There are special days that we meet with the Lord. And they bring great blessings to us. And our coming retreat is such a special day. It's such a special time. As we come into the blessings of the Lord through the retreat. Wonderful things happening. Power of God being manifested. Glory of God coming down. God manifesting and showing himself strong on behalf of everyone. A day of rest and gladness indeed. A day of joy and light. Of balm, of care, that removes sadness. Most beautiful, most bright. On thee the high and the lowly, through ages joined in tune. Singing, holy, 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 to the great God triune. We have such a day coming. A day of light. A day of salvation. That the Spirit sent from heaven will visit us afresh and anew. A triple light given unto us for greater things to be done in our lives. Bless God for this beautiful, wonderful day that is coming. Let's pray that what God has for us this coming days will be made manifest. We will not be denied. The Lord will remember you and remember me for good and send down his blessing upon us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are again tonight for this great privilege you are giving unto us to gather in your presence. Thank you, mighty God, for the beautiful things you are already doing in each and every of our lives. And you have set a day ahead of us, a day of great things, a day of the wonders of God, a day of the mighty visitations of heaven upon us individually and as a congregation, even in our families. Thank you, Lord. We ask tonight, Lord, as we set our eyes on that wonderful time of gathering together, your blessing will flow down again in Jesus' name. Amen. Even the remembrance of it will bring blessing. Amen. The thought of it will bring blessing. Amen. Praying towards it will bring blessing. Amen. And you will prepare us aright for all that you have purposed to do in our lives individually and in the church of God. Amen. Thank you for making us ready. And as we look at your word tonight, we pray that your spirit will prepare us and make us ready for the blessings coming in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, brethren, for coming tonight. Always a pleasure to see you when you are here. I'm sure some of us don't think about this, but somebody has been by himself all day. He craves the company of others. So when you show up on a day like this, it's wonderful. Amen. Amen. So the Lord bless you as you do continue to come on such a day like this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to be reading from Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 1, 6, 16. I have a couple of verses, but the one I'm focusing on there is Verse 16, Deuteronomy 16, 16. Can we say that? Deuteronomy 16, 16. You should be able to remember that. 16, 16. Amen. Amen. Actually, today is 15. Mm -hmm. I almost thought it would be 16 so that we can join them together. Amen. Amen. But no, today is 16, 16. So let's remember that. In verse 16, it says, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which each shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Amen. Amen. So here we see the feasts, the annual feast that the Lord has appointed for Israelites. And it's mandatory. He said, Three times a year shall all your males, 
Of course, in Israel, you realize that they don't typically count the women and the children. So it's, it doesn't mean that the children and the, uh, and the women are not going to appear, but it's mandatory. So if, if it is made mandatory for the man, he has to bring his family. He has to bring everyone along. So the Lord is saying to the men, because, you know, sometimes when activities are earmarked for us, who are those who always miss it? The men. The men. They are the ones you have to plead with. Most of the time you get the women. The more you tell them there's something happening, they will come. But most times the men are busy because they have to go make money, they have to go to their farm, they have to go and do this and do that. But the Lord has to set it first on the men so that they will know they must appear. And there's no way they can appear and not bring their families. Amen? Because if you just say three times a year, everybody must appear. There will be more women, there will be children, the men will be somewhere else doing one thing or the other. So the Lord made it mandatory. And I hope our men get that same message during this time. That the coming retreat, the global December retreat, and the GCK combined together, that all our men will be here. Amen. And as they come, they will come with their families. Amen. They will come with their wife. Amen. They will come with their children Amen. And, they, and friends and family members in Jesus' name. Amen. So here the Lord gave them a very important assignment that they must do when they get into the land. And even when they were in the wilderness, they were still observing this. How much more when they get to the promised land? Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord. God wants us to appear before him. It's very important. God always enjoy us coming to his presence. And that's why he, he has marked three times a year. And as we look at our church, you're going to discover, you know, we have something like that. Amen? There's the congress usually that used to be done early in the year. Amen? All our leaders, teachers, everyone is there. But before then, there's always the what? The December retreat. And then, there is the Easter retreat. So, we have this kind of convocation that the Lord has given. But as you look at what the scripture is saying here, it gave Israel three different feasts. And I'm just going to pass them quickly, just for your understanding. It talks about the feast of unleavened bread. Okay? What was that about? What is the meaning of unleavened bread? Bread without yeast. Unleavened, it talks about no sin. So it says, three times you are going to remember that feast of unleavened bread. It's also called the feast of the Passover. That was the time that the angel of the Lord passed over the land of Egypt and he spared the Israelites, in Goshen, and nothing happened to them. And God says, you must remember that moment in your history when I passed over you. The Passover is also a feast that reminds them of the greatness of God. It helps them to understand God's demand for purity and perfection. And so they must celebrate the Passover. It reminds them of the great work of God, how he intervened on their behalf. And so every time we come to our own feast also, we must remember God is a God of purity. God is a God of holiness. We come and then that's, that's the time we celebrate our salvation. That's when we celebrate holiness. That's when we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Because all of those three were present at the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because how else can you describe that God came into a land and he spared only a particular section and the rest of the land, you know, the judgment of God came upon. And we know that that foreshadows also what will happen when finally God takes us home. The only people that are going to be saved are those who are saved, who are children of God, who are holy, and who are waiting for the coming of the Lord. And so this feast reminds Israel of what God has done. The feast of unleavened bread. Passover, purity, and perfection of God. That you remember that God is a God that doesn't like sin. And so they must never permit leaven, which represents sin, 
in their midst. Then secondly, the Feast of Weeks. You know, after the Passover, the Feast of Weeks. Why do they call it Feast of Weeks? You are counting weeks. That's why they call it Feast of Weeks. So you count weeks. And that is also called the, uh, the Feast of Pentecost. So you count seven weeks from when you celebrate the Feast of Passover and then Pentecost comes. Amen. Amen. That's why you see the disciples in the book of Acts, they were praying in the upper room and they have been praying and praying and praying. And then as they finished praying, it was the 49th day and then on the 50th day, that was Pentecost for them. That was where the Holy Ghost came. Amen. Amen. What does he represent for them? Feast of weeks. Again, like I said, he represents Pentecost, but power. Ye shall receive what? Power. It was, it was to, to remind them that the power of God is still at work and the need of the power of God in their life. And the fact that God is powerful, is potent, and that he will do great things in their life. And then we see the Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles. Think about it. What is Tabernacles? Well, there is a saying that God will tabernacle among you, right? Tabernacle. That's reminding them of when they were going from tent to tent in the wilderness. Tent to tent. You know, when things were not very rosy, they, things were just so temporary. They need, God wants them to remember every stage that he took them through. He didn't want them to forget the Feast of Tabernacle represents the presence of God in their midst. Amen. Remember now, let me go back, unleavened bread, Passover. Feast of wheat, Pentecost. And now, the third one, the Feast of Tabernacle, represent what? Presence. That when they were in tents in the wilderness, God was there. God didn't abandon them. You remember the Bible, we are told, he led them by, he led them by pillars of cloud and pillars of fire. So, he was there with them. He was the rock that followed them. He was the rock that gave them water. He was always with them. And brethren, the same thing with us today. We always must remember, we may be going through challenges, we may be having situations that, that, that look that things are difficult, but God is always with us. Amen. His presence is always with us. And God wants us to celebrate that. He doesn't want us to forget that it is his presence that has kept us. You know, every day you drive out brothers and sisters, it is the presence of God that kept you from evil, from accidents, from terrible things that the enemy planned. God didn't allow. Because with the presence of God and the voice of God and the preeminence of God and the proclamations of God, you are going to discover that the enemy cannot penetrate. God's presence creates protection around us that keeps us safe and secure from the enemy. And finally, in that statement, in that verse 6, he says, and they shall not appear before the Lord, how? Empty. So there has to be a preparation. Number one, don't appear before the Lord sinful. Don't come before the Lord as a sinner. Prepare yourself. Take care of whatever it is that will hinder you from receiving the best from the Lord. So that's number one. But number two, don't come before him empty. Bring something. Amen? Bring something. Number one, bring yourself. Bring your family. We are not even talking about your substance yet. Bring something. Bring someone. You should not come empty and dead. Don't be in the program by yourself alone. Bring someone. Bring a family. Remind somebody. Encourage somebody. It's very important. You know, you may say, well, I don't have much. There's nothing I'm asking God for. Well, that's okay. I praise God for you, that you are okay, and you will continue to be okay. Amen. But somebody said this, and I think it's very right. He said, it's either you are in one storm now, or you are just gone out of one storm, or you are about entering into a storm. That's how life is. Storm never ends. In the life of children of God. In fact, in the life of anyone. The difference between us children of God and the people in the world is that in that storm, Christ is there with us. Amen. 
He's right there in the midst of the storm. If it's in the fiery furnace, he is there. If it's in the lion's den, he is there. If it's in the prison, he is there. It doesn't matter where we are, his presence is with us. Amen. That's the difference. But for the unbelievers, he is never there. It doesn't pre pro protect them. It doesn't keep them. But for us, he that keepeth Israel does not sleep or slumber. Amen. Amen. So that's the joy that we have. So tonight we have come to a time of prayer. And our title is simply personal preparation for our Emmanuel. Personal preparation for what? For our Emmanuel. We are preparing ourselves for Emmanuel to visit us. We are preparing ourselves to get ready. To get ourselves ready. In fact, if you look at that chapter 16 again, the Lord gave them some, some instruction. Chapter 16, then let me back up to verse 14. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy sons, and thy daughter, and thy man servant, and thy maid servant, and the Levites, and the strangers, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. Remember, I told us when he was singling out, when he singled out the man, right? There's a reason. That doesn't mean he doesn't want the women, the children. No, no, no. He knows they are going to be there. They must be there. For as long as their father is there, he will bring them. But now, he says, the man. He said three times, all your maids must appear before me. And before them, he had already said, the men, the women, the children, the servants, everyone will be there. Because when a man gets there, the household will go with him. That's how it was in Israel. That's how it should be in our Israel. Amen. That, you know, the, the women are not coming and the, and the uh, husband stay at home and say, you can go. Uh, we will meet when I have time I will come. That's not good enough. That's not, God doesn't expect that. That's like just saying, I don't take God serious. And the consequence can be very serious too. I pray we will not treat God with levity in Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, rejoice in thy feasts. Again, that's one condition again. When we are coming, we come with joy. Amen. We come with joy. We come with expectation. You know, when you are going to a place that you know something good is going to happen to you, how do you go there? Joyfully. If you are going to a place of war and that's the payday, right? And you are expecting your check, how do you go? Expectantly. You are saying, they are going to give us our pay today. I'm getting my check today. And, then, you know, you are just thinking of all that you can do with the money. Same day, you are coming to the house of the Lord. Beginning next Thursday, can the church say amen? Amen. Beginning in the evening next Thursday, amen. And you are coming to collect. Amen. You are coming to be blessed. Amen. You are coming to receive. Amen. You are coming for God's visitation. Amen. And He will mightily visit you in Jesus' amen. name. Amen. So it says, come joyfully. Don't come sorrowfully. When you come joyfully, it means your faith is up. It means your hope is up. It means your expectation is up. It means your trust in God is, is way up. You are coming joyfully. You say, I know if I get here, God will do something. And he will surely do something. Amen. In your life, in our midst, in Jesus' name. Amen. Think about it. People always say, have you ever remembered those testimonies? They said, if I just get to the crusade ground, if I just get to the retreat ground, I'm going to be okay. Oh, I hear, you know, I've just been given a diagnosis a, a, a week or two ago or some few weeks. I know this is coming to our area. I'm going to attend. Some will even leave their own area and go and attend in another state because they have this faith in God that if they get there, God will meet them there. Amen. As we come during this time, God will meet us here. Amen. On Thursday in the evening we come, God will meet us here. Amen. On Friday all day, God will meet us here. Amen. On Saturday all day, God will meet us here. Amen. The blessing of God will meet everyone here in Jesus. On Sunday, as we come here at our regular time, by the grace of God, the blessing will still be abundant and available. And we will swim in the ocean of God's goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, come. Don't, don't come empty-handed. It says, every man shall give as he is able. You know, sometimes when we have a program like this, we, we don't announce enough that people should give. It's a requirement that when you are com coming to the presence of, of the Lord, don't come empty-handed. Give something. 
to show that you 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 you, you want to thank and you are showing your gratitude to God for all that He has done all through the year. You give something, and sometimes I think because we have not instructed our our announcers, you know, this is something that should have been announced since they've been announcing the program, saying, as you are coming, come with a gift for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because that's, that's the instruction here. He says, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Number 17, and every man shall give as he is able. Amen. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee, he said, God has given you something. You must give. You know, we should get to a point where we don't even have to be told about this, that when we have special programs, God just put it in our heart, we just give. You know, it's like we're waiting until there is an announcement. Listen, brother, it's not because we have an exhaustible pocket. That's why we are not announcing. It's just that we believe. We just trust our members. Praise God. Amen. And I think that's the best way to put it. We just trust our members that there's no need for sin there. They know what to do. And I know you know what to do. Amen. You will give to the Lord and the Lord will bless you. Amen. He says every man. Now when he says every man, that means the whole family now. The man representing the family. Shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he has given thee. Amen. Amen. And I pray as you do. The Lord Almighty will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight we are coming again, as I said, personal preparation for our Emmanuel, to receive our Emmanuel. The one who is powerful, the one who is present, the one who is potent, our Passover, the one who gives us purity and perfection. We are coming into his presence. We want to receive his preeminence in our life. Even through our proclamation, there is going to be wonderful and marvelous things happening in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And he tells us that we should come with joy. Amen. Amen. Come with joy. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. He said that at the end of the verse 15. He says, seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God. In our own case here, we have six days. Praise God. Amen. Six days. Yes, we may be uh, kind of minimizing how many days we are here physically, but we're still going to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that is Monday, that is Tuesday. Amen. Amen. So by the grace of God, we're going to be here Thursday evening, the whole of Friday, the whole of Saturday, the whole of Sunday, and then Monday, we're going to only do evenings, Mondays, and Tuesdays. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do those days online. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he says, you and I, we must come. Seven days shall thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase. Can I hear an amen? amen. And in all the works of thy hand. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. Amen. God says, in all that you do, do it joyfully. Don't do it grudgingly. You are coming, come joyfully. You are giving, give joyfully. Don't, don't feel, you know, a, a, that, that somebody is forcing you, you have been forced to do. No, do it joyfully because when you do it like that, it, it rejoices the heart of God and then the Lord will answer you back in the multitude of that joy. He will even increase your joy. I said God will increase your joy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, brethren, this time of our program, as we all know, is usually a medium of reaching the lost. Amen. Amen. Please, let's not forget that. That's why we had the flyers. I know the announcement has been made, but I want to make a push a little bit about that. Invite people. It's a medium of reaching the lost. Number two, it's a mode of setting captives free. Amen? It's a way to, to get the captives to be set free. A medium of reaching the lost, a mode of setting captives free. It's a way for the master to sanctify blood-washed saints. Amen? The master will sanctify all blood washed saints in Jesus' name. Amen. And listen, brethren, it's a means of empowering those who are thirsty. Amen? Amen. If you are thirsty, God will empower you. He says, he says, come all ye. He says, come and drink freely. The sanctified and waiting believers, the Lord will empower them. 
the Lord will fulfill and, and satisfy their thirst in Jesus' name. It's a way mostly to bring God's people nearer to him. Amen? It's a period that will bring God's people nearer. Sometimes the busyness of life can get us a little farther from God. But the retreat time is a time we sit down and we examine ourselves and we look at what is going on. And then we begin to talk to the Lord about our lives. But brethren, also during this time, mighty deliverances for the oppressed. Mighty deliverances for you. Amen. If you are oppressed, oppression will be gone. Amen. If there is a challenge, the challenge will be removed. Amen. If there is a mountain, it is the time that mountains will disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a time to help to make consistent believers to become consistent. Amen. To strengthen us. To assist us in the name of Jesus. So that any area will be deflated. You know, we are totally renewed and restored to strength. Amen. Amen. It's also a time for the manifestation of God's glory. Amen. Amen. Manifestation of God's glory. Also, for those who are needy, more prosperity. I say more prosperity. Amen. God prospers us through our time of meeting with him in Jesus' name. You are able to spend time to talk to him about different areas of your life, which you have not had time. And then if there's an area, you know, all through the year that you are yet to receive answer, it's a good time to remind God that you will not have a carryover. Amen. That God will answer you finally in that area. And that you will, the only thing you will carry over to the new year will be your blessings. Not on, uh, not on answered prayer, but your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's a time to manifest God's glory. And we always, during that time, we maintain a concentrated teaching of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Concentrated teaching of the Word of God that will help us, that will strengthen us into the new year. Amen. Amen. So, brethren, the Lord is going to be speaking to us through the ministers, through the preachers, and by the grace of God, His blessing will come down upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. In Exodus 19, hear what the word of God says. Exodus 19, and the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come. Exodus 19, verse 9. Lo, I come. Can I say to you, brethren, Lo, the Lord is coming. Amen. Lo, salvation is coming. Amen. The word lo there means behold, be expectant. Expecting that the Lord is coming. And who is he coming for? Me. He's coming for you. He's coming for us. He's going to visit us. Lo, behold, the Lord is coming. It's like when, when the, Bible, in the Bible says in New Testament, it says, behold, the bridegroom coming. So the same way, lo, the Lord is coming. He's coming for you. And he's not coming. In fact, this one in this passage, it was so vivid. If I, let's read it. You will understand. Because he had given them the instruction, you know, that how they should come, what they should do. But now the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. God was telling Moses that the people may hear when I speak. We're going to pray about all of that when we get to the prayer. But the Lord is coming. He will speak. You will hear him. He will speak peace to you. He will speak joy to you. He will speak promotion to your life. He will speak strength unto you. He will speak healing unto you. Lo, I come. This is God himself promising it. He said, I'm coming. And God is promising you he's coming. Because his word is always true. And we can trust his word. Lo, I come unto thee. Unto thee. Who is that person? Unto thee, who is that person? The Lord is coming to you. Amen. He, know, he knows your situation, right? You know, I was listening to a, to a man of God, and he, and he was saying, you know, when the Bible says we should talk to God, sometimes some people feel, maybe God doesn't know what we are going through, that's why we are talking to him. No, he knows. He's an all-knowing God, amen? But he wants, he wants to know our sincerity. Maybe we actually tell him. When he came, why, why did Adam and Eve get into trouble? Is it that God didn't know that they already deceived? No, God knew. 
But he still asked them questions. And all he was asking is, are you going to be sincere? Or you are going to be hiding? Oh, and he said, well, we are hiding in the garden because we are naked. And God says, how did you know? Where did you get that from? I didn't create you that way. You shouldn't know. You have done something wrong. And then they start passing the blame. That will not be a portion. Amen. In Jesus' name. He says, Lo, I come unto thee. Why? That the people may hear when I speak. Brethren, when the preachers begin to preach, please begin to hear God through them. Please don't, don't allow their personality, how they speak. Some of us, you know, maybe our English, you know, not very good. We are not eloquent. Uh, we don't speak in the way that you know. You know, we, we are stammerers. We, uh, we don't even understand how to speak very well. Maybe that's the situation. And then when that individual, God is using, you know, him to preach, you are saying, what is he reading? I don't even understand. And then you shut up. Please don't shut up. Amen. This is Moses. Hallelujah. This is Moses speaking to the people that God is coming. But do you know who Moses was? Mm -hmm. Astamara. He couldn't speak well. So I'm imagining Moses saying, God, 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 God is coming. And you may just laugh about that. But that's the reality. And you may be lost in what Moses is saying. He stammers. He doesn't have confidence to speak. That's not what is going on here. Just listen to the passages. Mm -hmm. Listen to what is being read to you in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Don't worry yourself about the mannerism of the person because I'm telling you, God is coming. Amen. During this program, God is coming. Amen. God will speak to you. Amen. If there are questions you've had for so long, God will talk to you. Amen. Amen. Expect him to talk. Don't say, well, if he speaks and I hear, that's okay. No, it's not about if. There's no if now. He says, I am coming. Yes. And I will speak. Amen. And the people, he didn't say, Moses, you only will hear me. He says, the people will hear. Amen. All our people here, we will hear. Amen. We will hear what God is saying. Amen. We will hear his admonition. Amen. We will get the blessing Amen. that come through him speaking. Because every time God speaks, he speaks blessing. Amen. Especially when he says, go gather with the people. If they have not seen, he is not coming to judge. And listen, even the New Testament tells us, Jesus has not come to judge. He himself said, I have not come to judge. So, sometimes we don't want to make it our ministry to just judge and judge and judge and judge. Yes, it's good to tell somebody that they are doing wrong, but sometimes speak more of encouragement. Speak more of instruction. Tell people how to go. You know, it's like they brought that woman caught in adultery, right? I'm telling you, if it was me, praise God, the human me, the not very intelligent me, the limited me, I probably would have talked to that woman and said, how did you get yourself into, you know, five husbands? Are you okay, woman? What's going on? You know, Jesus didn't bother about that. Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't bother about that. All Jesus was involved in was to get that woman to be saved, to know God. And Jesus did it in such a way that all of those histories didn't matter. Even though Jesus used the history to get our attention, and she now said, I mean, I'm talking about John chapter 4 now. Amen. The woman at the well. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus used that knowledge of knowing about her life to kind of draw her to realize that the person he's talking to is not ordinary. That was the only thing Jesus did. But Jesus didn't major on the same. Right? Jesus major on how to get that woman to go from unbelief with the little knowledge she had to believing. And Jesus did that perfectly. Amen. So, let's listen to Jesus during this retreat. Amen. Amen. Let's hear him speak. He says, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak. And I've always told people that the, the, the key of our doubt is the voice of God. If you can hear God clearly, you will never doubt. Part of the reason why human beings doubt and doubt and doubt is because 
Peradventure, we've never had the experience of hearing God speak. You know, when God wants to convert people of the other religion, he didn't leave them to us to do it. God goes to them directly. I think today I was reading something about mass conversion in Islamic nations. That God was showing himself, he was revealing himself to them and telling them, I am God. And he was showing them, and then he will ask those people, go to so and so place. When you get there, you will meet so and so. Talk to that person, he will do this, he will do that. And before the individuals get there, God already went ahead. He will talk to those people and say, I have sent somebody to you. The person is of the other religion. So and so you will speak. When you hear the voice of God, doubt is gone. May you hear the voice of God during this program. Amen. May I hear the voice of God during this program. Amen. May God speak and may our ears be opened in Jesus' name. May there be clarity of the word of God to us in Jesus' name. He says that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe, believe thee forever. They will believe you forever. You see, when you hear God speak, doubts go. Amen. Amen. Thomas, if I don't see him and the place they nail him, I will not believe. And after Thomas saw it, eh, he said, my Lord and my God. It is a cure for our doubt, for our unbelief. God must cure our doubts and unbelief. Amen. God must strengthen our faith in him. Amen. During this retreat, it will happen to you and me in Jesus' name. Amen. When I speak, they will believe you forever. And Moses told the word of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today, tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. That's what we are talking about tonight. Let's get ready. Amen? Amen. Let's get ready. Let's prepare ourselves. Brethren, yes, we may be children of God for many years. We may be pastors. We may be ministers. But God says, prepare yourself. I have something better for you. I have something greater for you. I want to take you to higher height. Wherever you are now, and we are not talking about sin. We are talking about getting to higher ground. We are talking about moving higher in your relationship with God. You know, get ready. Prepare yourself. Prepare your heart. Take away doubts. You know, trust God. Be expectant. Let your spirit be open that God is going to speak to me and he will speak to you. Amen. Listen, brethren, God is not coming to speak to just one man. He's going to speak to all of us. Amen. At whatever level you are, God will reach you. Amen. At whatever level, level I am, God will reach me. Amen. In the name of Jesus, go unto the people and sanctify them today, tomorrow. Let them wash their clothes. So, get yourself ready. Physical washing of clothes, oh yes, do it. That means when you are coming to the presence of God, don't come shabbily. Amen? You know, sometimes when we ask people to come and minister to us and all of that, people just think it's no big deal. No, God is interested in a clean appearance. Amen? Amen. He's interested in a very clean appearance. So don't say, well, it's the house of God. I can. No, don't just do any harm. God is interested. Come, come here clean. Come here pure. Even order. You know, for those who are going to sing for us, God is interested in orderliness. Amen. Orderliness. Not just anybody jumping, you know, if I have the time, I'll come. If I don't have the time. And when, when we give you assignment, then you are late. Whenever you come, oh, you are rushing. Okay, please, please make a way for me now. I have to. No, you have not even taken time to sit down and pray and prepare yourself. So, be ready for God to speak through you. Amen. And to speak to you Amen. in Jesus' name. Oh, you say, Pastor, I'm not giving any assignment. Your presence is an assignment. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Your presence is what? An assignment. That you'll be here, you are here on time, you are praying on time, you are listening to the word of God on time. That's good enough. God wants you to do that in every program. Sanctify them, let them wash their clothes. Verse 11. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down. In the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And Moses went down, verse 14, from the mount unto the people and sanctified. He did exactly what God said. Sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. Mm. Amen. 
And it came to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. And it came to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. It will come to pass. Amen. This coming weekend, it will come to pass. Amen. The Lord will visit you. Amen. The Lord will visit me. Amen. The Lord will visit us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And it came to pass on the third day. God is always truthful to his word. He's always faithful to his word. And it came to pass. On the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud. You know, remember he said, I will come unto thee how? In a thick cloud. So he has come now. I said he has come now. And he says, he came to pass on the third day, thunders, lightning, then a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. You see? When we come into our camp and God is there, he creates fear. Amen? He creates fear. And it's not a slavish fear. It's an holy fear. The reverence of God, that's the fear. We come in and we reverence God. And, you know, we bow our head. And they say, let us pray, we pray. Let us read the word of God. We do, we do everything reverently. Because we respect God very much. Amen. Amen. So, during this weekend, coming weekend of our program, so shall it be here. Amen. The Lord will prepare us. Amen. He will prepare the congregation. Amen. He will bless us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our time is fast spent, but let me look at a couple of things quickly. I've talked about personal preparation, right? I've talked about it. Prepare yourself, right? Okay, Get yourself ready. That's very important. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. And part of getting yourself ready is knowing what you are coming for. Numbers 11, 18, the Bible says, And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourself against tomorrow. Numbers 11, 18, And ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord. Wherefore them they were weeping. We, we are not going to weep. Amen. What we are going to do is we are going to state what we want. You know, what, what they did was they were doing it wrongly. They could have talked to God about their needs. And God would still meet the need. Amen. But they were weeping and they were doing it wrongly. But God said, for us, we are going to state. What personal preparation means, we state our needs. What we want God to do for us. You write it down. Amen? You write it down. Don't be like other people. I come, whatever God give, I get. No, that's not good enough. Come here with stated needs. Because when you finish the program, you, you want to be able to look through those things and say, yes, God did this. God did this. God did this. These ones are yet to be done. I'm still praying until they are done. Because if you don't state them, then you don't even know what you ask. It will just be like we came, we didn't know what we asked. Then if God did it or not, we don't even know. So they said, for ye have wept in the years of the Lord, saying, Who shall give? That's what they were asking. And it's good. There's nothing wrong that they said, Who shall give us? They should have said, Lord, give us. Lord, we trust you. But they said, Who shall give? For us, maybe who shall help me? For you, maybe who shall deliver me? For you, maybe who shall assist me? For you, maybe who will be with me? Whatever it is. And the Bible says, because they stated those things, therefore the Lord give them the flesh. So, whatever you state down, God will give to you. Personal people, but do it well. We are learning from Israel now that we don't do it like that. We are not weeping and crying and then are blaming God. You took us out of Egypt and now we are in the wilderness. When, when are we going to get flesh? No, that's not us. We've learned from that. We are not going to do that. Amen. We're just going to state what we want Amen. and we're going to keep on praying. God will answer us. Amen. Personal preparation. You need to wash your clothes, please do it. Come here neatly, as we said, personal preparation. Get your family ready, get your children ready. You know, if they're going to eat breakfast in the morning very quickly because you are leaving early, especially those who have young people, please let them eat. You know, that means you wake up early enough. You know? The program starts at 9. So, before 9 o'clock, make sure you wake up early, get your children, the little ones, let them eat. You, as an adult, you can, you can fast. You can fast breakfast and eat lunch. We'll give you lunch. Amen? Amen. You will get lunch. Amen? Amen? 
you get lunch in the job, but you know the children can't wait to lunch. That's part of the preparation. So get something ready for them. Of course, they're going to eat cookies until they, they don't want to eat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I am promising that they will have enough cookies to eat. Praise God. So they will have the children will have enough, but we as adults, we are we wait on the Lord. At lunch, we'll eat. And if you don't want lunch, that's okay too. Wait till dinner. There's going to be dinner too. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So that's personal preparation. Prepare yourself, prepare the family, get ready, and make sure you leave on time. Okay, the program starts at 9.30, you are leaving home at, 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 uh, at 8.45, 9 o'clock. Half of the first program, you may miss it, and that may be where God really wants to start with you and get you ready. So be here on time. In those days, I'm, I'm telling you, brethren, in those days, and they still do it in our mother church, you know, when, they are, when they're going to do it in DLICC now, some people are going to even be in the camp there. But for those who are coming from outside, they're already in. And ah, they are about or 30 minutes before the program starts. They have enough time to pray and get themselves ready. Let's be like that also. Amen. Amen. If things happen in those days, because they do things the right way. It's not because they are better than us. It's just because they took God serious. You know, and they, and they believe that God will do this for me, so I'm going to be there right on time. I'm not coming just when, you know, when I have time, I'll be there. After all, they have so many preaching for the day. So when I get there, I will still get a lot. Listen, the morning time may just be your time. It may be time that angels are proposed that you are there, you get your blessing. You will not miss it. Amen. So that's personal preparation. Our desires, let's put it down. What do we desire? What are we determining, determining that the law will do for us? Amen? And let's make sure we are disciplined. Amen? Be disciplined. And please, as we are coming, depend on God. Have a desire with determination and discipline, depending on God, and be devoted in all godliness. Okay? Don't rely on, fle on flesh. Be devoted in all godliness. Dedicate yourself to go the extra mile. Maybe a little faster. Amen? A little more time of praying while we are together. Others may be making noise and talking. Spend some time in prayer. Be like Hannah. You remember how Hannah did it? When they were meeting in Chilo. Everyone was eating and drinking. You know, some people, the moment we, we say we're going to eat at two and the food is not happening, they can't hear anything anymore. They, are, they shut off. But... Hannah was not like that. Hannah, Hannah was, in fact, when people were drinking and all of that, Hannah was busy praying. To the point that she prayed, 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 and Eli said, take away your drunkenness. I mean, what, what are you doing? And she said, my Lord, I'm not drunk. I'm just pouring out my heart. Spend time to pour out your heart to the Lord. Let there be devotion. Let there be dedication to going the extra mile. And then let there be discernment. Amen. Discernment. Discernment. When God is speaking, you need to know. When the promises of God have been issued out, you need to discern that that's for me. Amen? You say, that's for me. When the man of God speaks, you know, it's not like you have told him and he's uh, preaching you. He just says something and it matches you perfectly. That, that's God speaking to you. Amen? Just take it. Just receive it. And begin to pray to us and say, Lord, that's me. That's me. You've had those testimonies in crusade. You know, people will say, the GS mentioned something and say, ah, I catch it. That's me. Amen? That's how faith works. You know, can two work together except they are in agreement? So when you agree with the servant of God, preaching the word, speaking the word, it shall be, be unto you according to your faith. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. So number one is that personal preparation. Then number two is prevailing prayer. Amen? Amen. Prevailing what? Prayer. prayer. Prevailing prayer. Zechariah 13, verse 9. This, I'm, I'm looking at the second aspect of it. 9b, I will say. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. Amen. That's God speaking. They will call on my name, and I will do what? Amen. I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they, they shall say, the Lord is my God. Do you see the partnership, you and God now? God says, they are my people. You say, he is my God. Two people working together, and there is agreement between the divine and the human. It's always perfect answer in that situation. And God will grant it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I say God will give it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And please, your prayer, don't be limited in your prayer. Second Kings 13, 
17. You know this story, but I'm just going to tell us, is the story of Elijah and the king of Israel. You know where he gave him an arrow to shoot, right? And the man did it little. In verse 17, and Elisha said, open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And the king of Israel shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's inheritance, and the arrow of deliverance, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek, till thou hast consumed them. So, ask definitely. Ask in faith. Ask believing that God will do it, and so shall it be. Partner with your Elisha, whoever that may be, who is ministering at that time, let him be your Elisha. Whatever he declares, take it, and so shall it be for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 43, verse 25. He said, I am I, even I, I am he that blotted out thy transgression for my own sake. I will not remember thy sins. Amen. You know, the enemy may be reminding you of some things, right? Uh, but this, but that. God says, I will not remember thy sins. You know, the devil trades in that. He will go to your past. He said, uh, look at you, you are asking now, what of 10 years ago, 5 years ago, uh, 2 years ago, 1 year ago, for as long as you have dealt with that with God, it is gone. And somebody answer me. Amen. I said it's gone. If you have Amen. dealt with God on it, and if the enemy wants to make you to, to feel guilty on it, you can deal with it right away. Amen. The mercy of God is still there every day. That doesn't mean we are encouraging you to sin, but I'm saying, don't let the enemy get you in the way they tie you down, and then you can't move. And they are, they are piling guilt and guilt and guilt on you. The blood of Jesus still cleanses. There's still mercy Amen. at the seat of Christ. Amen. So, ask for that mercy. Don't let the enemy tie you down, and then they will tie you down and rope that thing on you so that you can't even move anymore. He says, I, even I, I am he that blotted out that transgression for my own sake. Everything God will do for you is not by your sake or for what you have done. Because of him. For my own sake. Amen. Israel didn't get anything from God for their own sake. It is for my own sake. That's God speaking. And then he says, and I will not remember thy sin. Put me in remembrance, verse 25. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified and God will justify you. Amen. Declare thou that thou mayest be healed. Amen. Declare thou that thou mayest be delivered. Amen. Declare thou that thou mayest be set free. Amen. Declare thou that thou mayest have a breakthrough. Amen. Declare thou that God may answer you. Amen. Declare it. Don't let the enemy silence you. As you declare it, so shall it be. He said, let's plead together. Declare that. Declare the word of God. For it shall be so unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praying always, Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always, always, always. Prevailing prayer. Now until the program. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. Washing thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians 6, 18. Amen. 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 Number three now, our proclamation and our participation. You know, in all of this, as you are proclaiming the word, you must make sure you are participating. Don't stay away. Amen. Amen. You know, don't stay away. God is doing something here. God is doing something with you. Amen. God is going to do something in your life. Amen. So participate. Be around. Proclaim it to others. You remember Jesus Christ was telling that man in Mark chapter 5. Maybe we should read that before we go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5. Jesus gave the man an instruction. Mark 5, in verse 19. Mark 5. The, the, the demoniac. And when he was coming to the sheep, he that has been possessed with the devil, that's verse 18, prayed him that he might be with him. I'll be, Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. Amen. Amen. God wants us to go as we live here today. Go and tell your friends. Go and tell family members. Let them know this program is, is, is occurring. Invite them to come because Jesus is waiting for them. Amen. You know that woman, uh, that man went out. He began to publish it, we are told, in the capolis. How great things Jesus has done for him. And all men, 
did marvel. But look at, and when Jesus was passed over again by sheep unto the other side, much people gather unto him. You know, by proclamation, people get to hear and they want to come. So we can't keep quiet when God wants to do great things in other people's life, and then we just pretend like we don't know. God will help us. Amen. I said, God will help us. Amen. Psalm 68, verse 11, the Lord gave the word, and great is what? The company of them that publish it. Are you going to be in that company? Yeah. I am in that company. Amen. And God will do great things Amen. in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. Let's rise up. We're just going to spend a few minutes in prayer. The prayers are already prayed during the message. Amen. So let's just spend a few minutes and thank God for what he has ahead of you, what he has prepared ahead of you. Worship him and glorify him. This is our preparation for our Emmanuel. Our Emmanuel is coming. Emmanuel, God with us. God is coming to visit us. God is coming, you know, to do wonders in our life. God is coming to partner with us. God is coming to release us. God is coming to deliver us. God is coming to set us free. God is coming to do wonders in our life. God is coming to open doors. God is coming, you know, that all the breakthrough that we need, that God will grant unto us. Let's open our mouth and say, Father, I thank you. I receive the word of your servant tonight. Like the people of Israel, they received the word of Moses, and they prepared the son of God themselves ready. Prepare yourself tonight. Get ready. Get ready. Remember personal preparation. Very important. Wash your clothes. Get yourself ready. Wash your time. Make time available. Make time ready for God and for, for the time that he of his visitation. Be present. Be available. You know, so that what God has purpose and plan, you will receive in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Father, get me ready. Prepare me. And if you are already trying to get time off at work and you are having challenges in the name of Jesus, go back and ask and they will grant you that, that request in the name of Jesus. The Lord will open doors for you so that you will be available all through this program and then the fullness of the blessing of the Lord will be yours in the name of Jesus. Remember, this is the medium of reaching the Lord. Let's make sure that we reach out to those you know, who are out there. It's a mode of setting the captives free. The power of God is present here by the grace of God to deliver, to set free. It's a, a, a time to set the captive free. The master is sanctifying all the blood washed saints. Let's trust God that as we come, if you are yet to be sanctified, the Lord will sanctify you. If you are yet to be saved, this is your time to be saved. The Lord is going to empower you also. It's a means of empowering all those who are thirsty, all those who are sanctified, all those who are waiting believers. It is the time that the Lord will visit them. It's mostly to bring God's promises nearer us. All the promises of God are going to be yea and amen in your life during this time in the name of Jesus. And God will bring mighty deliverance to all those who are oppressed in the name of Jesus. And if there's any oppression in your life in any area, believe God is coming mightily to visit you and to do wonders in your life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. It's, it's a time to make consistent Christian believers out of all the saints of God, making them consistent, making them to stand, you know, in the prosperity. There's going to be more prosperity for all the needy, more prosperity for all the children of God. More prosperity is coming. Spiritual prosperity, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God is bringing prosperity. You will prosper in the work of your hand. You will prosper in your family. You will prosper in your career. You will prosper in everything that you lay your hands upon. Spiritually, you will prosper. Prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prospered. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. In the name of Jesus. And look at how Moses brought the people out of the camp, and they met God, and God spoke to them, and they had him. God, we open your ears. Our young people, our, you know, the manageable ones who have been trusting God to speak to them, your ears are open now. Your ears are open now. Begin to hear God speak to you. Begin to hear what God is saying. Begin to receive the direction of the Lord for your life. In the name of Jesus, this is your season. This is your hour. This is your moment. The Lord will specially prepare you. He will get you ready for this wonderful time. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all that you request as you personally desire with determination and discipline. And you depend on God, knowing that God cannot fail. 
knowing that God cannot fail. Let there be devotion in all godliness and dedication to go in the extra mile. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Father, give me all that I need to be able to receive. In the name of Jesus, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Luke chapter 1, verse 11, and there appear unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Hallelujah. Angelic manifestation. Angelic revelation. Open your mouth and say, Father, as I come into the presence of the Lord, let there be divine messengers visiting me, granting me messages, revealing to unto me in the name of Jesus. They appear unto him. They appear unto her. Not just to one, but to all of us. We are going to hear God speak clearly. We are going to hear God talk to us in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Angelic ministration. Angels of God will descend down into this place and visit the people of God in the name of Jesus. And we are going to hear God speak to us. We are going to hear God speak to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There appeared the angel of the Lord to Zechariah at the altar. When he was in the altar, as we come into the church of God, angel of God will appear to you. They will speak to you. And the Bible says, Zechariah saw him. Zechariah saw him. Yes, he was troubled, but for you, you know now that angels are coming. You know now that, that God is sending angels to you. You are not going to be afraid. You are not going to be troubled. You are just going to believe when the angels show up, they are showing up with good news. They are showing up with blessing. They are showing up with breakthrough. They are showing up, you know, with the lifting power of God. They are showing up, you know, with encouragement from heaven. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, angelic ministration, angelic empowerment. Oh, Lord, I'm expecting. In the name of Jesus, pray for discernment. Discernment, discernment. When your angel comes, you will not miss it. When your message comes, you will not miss it. Your ears will be open. You'll be able to discern. When God is speaking to you, when God has brought your miracle, you will not doubt. You will not say, I'm not sure. No, you'll be sure. You'll be sure. You will know. God will speak to you in language that you can understand. In the name of Jesus, pray and tell the Lord. Pray and tell the Lord. Pray that God will help you to have prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. You call on him, he will hear you. In the name of Jesus, it shall be prevailing prayer. Your prayer will not go in vain. It will not be a powerless prayer, but a prayer that doesn't go anywhere. Prayer that is just maligned. No, that will not be your prayer. God will empower your prayer by faith in him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And as you pray, just like Elisha told the king of Israel, you will smite your Syrians. You will smite all the enemy till thou have consumed them. Till thou, every enemy, every ch ch challenge of your life, they shall be consumed and be overthrown by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's tell the Lord. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. He has the power to do it. He has promised to do it. And so shall it be for you and for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Brethren, please pray, 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 pray. Pray that God will prepare you mentally, spiritually, and physically for his visitation. In all areas, he will prepare you. He will prepare you. Please anticipate a life-changing encounter. Please anticipate. Say, Lord, I expect a life-changing encounter. A life-changing encounter. I expect a life-changing encounter during this program. In the name of Jesus. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. And ask God to put the whole armor of God upon you. Ephesians 6, 13. Whole armor of God. Whole armor of God. God will arm you with the weapon of warfare throughout this season. In the name of Jesus, as you anticipate great things, God will visit you. God will visit you. God will visit you. In the name of Jesus, tell the Lord, Father, I need your help to settle my mind so I can stay focused to hear you. Let me stay focused. All the, my, 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 my heart is going here and there, walking here. And, all the distractions, Father, help me that my heart will settle. I will be settled. When I'm hearing your word, I'm not going to be uh, buying and selling somewhere. I will settle and focus on you. Let's pray. And the heart of every man and woman in the church will be focused on the word of God and on Christ in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, brethren. Let's pray, brethren. Let's pray that God will bring all our brothers and sisters, 
All our brothers and sisters, they will be here. Let's pray God we prepare them. They will not be absent. On Thursday, they will be here. On Friday, they will be here by the grace of God. Let's remember our brethren from Iowa. They are coming in their large numbers to join us. Let's pray. The Lord will grant them joy and mercy and bring them here safely in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray. Every one of them desiring to come, God will make it a momentous occasion for them. In that many of them are students. Students, students, let's pray. This time will be a time of rest and resourcefulness for them, that God will reach out to them in his power. Righteousness shall prevail in their midst in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray God will remove any barrier, any barrier that will prevent us from receiving from him, from hearing his voice, from knowing about his guidance. God will remove all those barriers in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. God will do it, God will do it, God will do it, God will do it. In the name of Jesus, let's pray that God will fill us with peace in his presence. Peace in his presence. We will not be troubled at the presence of God. We will have peace. We will have joy. Our heart will stay on him. Our focus will be on him. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's pray for wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit for us to ask a right. To ask a right during that time. Even now as we are asking, the help of the Holy Spirit unto you and unto me. In the name of Jesus. Bible says the steps of a good man, they are ordered of the Lord. Pray that the Lord will order your step. The Lord will order your step. Order my step. God will order the step of our leaders. That those who are going to lead us will be well prepared also. God Almighty will empower them and anoint them to lead us in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it. In the name of Jesus. He said, those who hope in the Lord, he will renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. If you have to wait on the Lord, that's okay. As God gives you the grace, wait on the Lord and trust him. Trust him for a breakthrough. Trust him that God will give you something. He said, behold, I do a new thing. You need something new. Let God do something new for you. Let God break barriers for you. Open your mouth and say, God, do it. What has been hitherto difficult for you? Let God make it easy. Let God make it a possibility. In the name of Jesus, let God surprise you. Say, Lord, surprise me. Surprise me during this retreat, during this global crusade. Please visit me afresh and new in a special way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Revelation 21, verse 5, it says, He who seated on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. Let's tell the Lord, all things must pass away. Lord, in our life, all things must pass away. All the old things, all the dregs and the drags of life that has been in our way, Father, let them pass away. A new life. You know, brethren, we are preparing for a new year. And we are going to forget that we ever were in 2023. That 2023 will not matter anymore when we enter 2024. So let's pray. Father, behold, make something new. Make all things new. All things new. He that seated on the throne said, behold, I make all. It's not by your power. It's by the power of God. Father, behold, make all things new. Let this whole year be gone with its challenges and problems. Behold, make all things new. Do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. In the name of Jesus, let the help of the Holy Spirit arise on our behalf. In the name of Jesus, open our eyes to see wonders, to see wonders, to see wonders. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. I will read Revelation 3 before we round up. Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. Revelation 3, verse 8, it says, Behold, I have set before thee an open door, Amen. and no man can shut it. Amen. I have set before thee an open door. Amen. I want you to pray finally as we go and say, Father, the door you have opened for me, it will not be shut. Amen. Amen. He said, for thou hast a little strength. Please, Lord, remember how, how little my strength is. He says, and thou hast kept my word. Please, Lord, remember how you have helped me to keep your word. And hast not denied 
my name. He said, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. We say they are Jew and not. But do like, Behold, I make them to come and worship before thy feet. Amen. And to know that I have loved thee. Amen. Father, lavish your love upon me. Amen. The door you have opened, O oh Lord, let it remain open. Father, lavish your love over me. Show me a token of your love in the name of Jesus. Let people see that you love me. Let it be shown that you love me. You said, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Lord, every hour of temptation ahead, oh Lord, keep us, preserve us. In the name of Jesus, he said, it shall come upon the world. This hour of temptation that is coming upon the world, Father, keep us, preserve us. The door you have opened, let it remain open. And all the evil doors you have shut, let it remain shut. In the name of Jesus, let the new year bring new things. Thank you. During this retreat, O oh Lord, mighty visitation to the glory of your name. Let's begin to bless God. Let's begin to magnify God. Let's begin to glorify him. Beyond what you can ask or think, ask God to answer you. Beyond what you can ask or think, give him glory and give him praise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you. We are grateful for the little we can do tonight. But you have said in your word, and we hold on to that promise, that little is much when God is in it. Father, we thank you that the little that we have done tonight, Father, your grace will enlarge it. Amen. You will water it. Amen. It will grow and germinate Amen. in our life and in our congregation in Jesus' name. Amen. Our expectations are great. We are looking unto you for greater things than we've ever seen before. Miracles we've never even experienced. Father, do them in our lives and in our fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for those who are coming from afar. We are grateful that you will bring them here safely. Amen. And you take them back safely in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the time that we're going to be here, your presence remains with us. Amen. Your preeminence remains with us. Amen. You are preeminent in all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Your glory shall abide over your people in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, beyond what we are able to ask or think, you will do for us. Amen. To the glory of your name. Amen. Even tonight, Lord, we pray. Whatever challenges people have brought here, they are dropping them. Amen. They are going home light. Amen. They are going home joyful. Amen. They are going home, oh Lord, healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Going home delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the name of the God of Jacob deliver everyone in Amen. Jesus' name. Let the name of Jesus deliver everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, whatever name the sickness may be called, O oh Lord, you said God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names, that in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Father, in the situations of your people as they go tonight, let there be confession that you are Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the testimony be, O oh Lord, evaporating and be shared over and over that the Lord has done great things in our midst. Amen. Father, we will give you all the glory. Amen. And the blessing will remain ours. Amen. Even as we go tonight, your presence go with us. Amen. Journey mercy to all of us. Amen. All through the weekend, O oh Lord, watch over us jealously. Amen. Keep us safe as we drive on the road. Amen. And that those who are going to walk tonight or those who are coming back, keep them safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you and we glorify you. Amen. For in Jesus' glorious and marvelous name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you.